Hello, welcome back to the second lesson of the series. In our previous lesson, we discussed basic concepts of a digital sequential system. We shall now examine how a microprocessor operates in the framework of a programmable sequential machine and a von Neumann machine. We shall structure the present lesson into four broad sections. Programmable sequential machines, concepts of von Neumann machine, essential functional components of a von Neumann machine, and finally, structure of a microprocessor-based system. Let us start with the programmable sequential machine. The sequential machine discussed in the previous lesson had a fixed sequence of operation. Let us once again consider the example of the pedestrian crossing traffic light. The three-step sequence and the actions performed remain the same once the hardware is fabricated. Our traffic controller fortunately uses a ROM decoder. This makes it possible to change the number of cycles of the green light period by changing only the content of the ROM. We can make further improvements by using an extra address line in the ROM and connecting this line to a switch. The behavior of the controller would now change in accordance with the switch position. When the switch is set on position 1, the green period may be made 4 clock periods instead of the usual 2 clock periods. Of course, we would have to keep an appropriate program in the ROM for this to happen. By the way, I happen to have a programmable sequential machine right here. The twinkle star music which you had been listening to came from this toy. Though it is entirely mechanical, it has a clock and counter which you can set in motion by this knob. It also has an output decoder, though mechanical. When you change the decoder, the music will change from Twinkle Star to London Bridge. Watch this to happen. So far, we have been changing only the output. The internal state sequence remained unchanged. In a more generalized sequential machine, the state transition, that is the sequence of internal states, may also be altered by the input signal. This is the structure of such a machine. Here, we need a state register in place of the counter an additional state decoder and the usual output decoder. The state decoder decides the next state depending on the present state and the external input. State diagrams may be unsuitable to describe complex sequential machines, especially when complex state transition laws involving states and external inputs are required. We then require a flowchart. Flowchart, as we know, are commonly used for describing algorithms. A complex sequential machine designed to satisfy a flowchart is often called an algorithmic sequential machine. The timing and control unit of a microprocessor to be discussed in the next lesson is a sequential system of this kind. Such Algorithmic sequential machine may also be made programmable by using ROMs. The programmability described just now is hardware programmability, as at least a ROM has to be changed manually to reprogram it. More functionality of algorithmic sequential machine could be obtained if the sequence of operation could be changed 
without touching the hardware. This is the central idea of a von Neumann machine. The versatility of a von Neumann machine is derived from three innovative concepts. First, its processor accepts binary instructions or opcodes by which the functions of the machine may be controlled. Second, sequence of such instructions are stored in the random access memory. Thirdly, a von Neumann machine can load its own program. The structure of a von Neumann machine is shown in the figure. The action of such a processor includes memory read and write, data input and data output, and arithmetic logic operations on data. Let us see how a von Neumann machine works with the help of a flowchart. There are two basic cycles of the machine. The processor first fetches an instruction from the memory. This is known as the fetch cycle. Next, in the execute cycle, the instruction just fetched is executed. Each of these machine cycles may actually constitute a number of state transition of the ASM. However, it is rather convenient to explain the operations of a von Neumann machine in terms of machine cycles. Thus, we see that a von Neumann machine is a special as well as a generalized algorithmic state machine. In fact, any algorithmic state machine can be constructed by a von Neumann machine with an appropriate program. Most computers, including microprocessors, are inherently of von Neumann machine structure. Extending our argument, any sequential system can be implemented by a microprocessor. The central theme of a von Neumann machine is programmability. And a program, after all, is a sequence of instructions. Each such instruction of a microprocessor consists of an opcode with zero or more operands. For simplicity, we would assume the opcode and the operand are of one byte each. In the example shown, the opcode byte contains 96 hex, which may mean add the first operand 47 hex with some other number. The sequence of completing one instruction, say add or subtract, is called an instruction cycle. Let us now look more closely at an instruction cycle of a von Neumann machine or specifically that of a microprocessor. An instruction cycle consists of several machine cycles. Each machine cycle is composed of several ASM states, also called T states or clock states. The first machine cycle of any instruction is used for fetching the opcode from the memory. Depending on the opcode, zero or more operands are to be fetched from memory. One machine cycle is required for each operand fetched. The instruction is actually executed in the last machine cycle. The instruction cycle may also be described by a simplified state diagram. The M1 cycle is opcode fetch, that is OF. If no operand is required, the machine goes to M4, that is execute. When there are two or more operands, the machine follows the sequence M1, M2, M4, or M1, M2, M3, M4, respectively. Note that M2 and M3 are both memory read operations. Type of M4 depends on the actual instruction. In this example, it is an input-output operation. We now describe an instruction cycle with the help of a flowchart. We note that in fetch cycles, the opcode is fetched, 
The output is then decoded to find out the number of operands. Operands are then fetched one by one. The whereabouts of the next instruction is estimated and the machine is set up for execution. The execute cycle may also have several sub-cycles. After executing one complete instruction, normally the next instruction fetch cycle are entered. However, if the machine is interrupted, it may branch out to a different route. Now we know broadly how programs are executed inside any computer, particularly within a microprocessor. Let's take a look at the microprocessor externally, especially how a microprocessor in conjunction with other elements make up a microprocessor based system. The essential components of a microprocessor based system are the microprocessor itself, the random access memory for data and loadable programs, read only memory for permanent programs, input ports, output ports, address bus, control bus, and the data bus. A printed circuit board houses all these components, power supply lines, and connectors for external connection. You must have seen an automatic beverage vending machine. Let us now see how we can configure a versatile automatic coffee vending machine using a microprocessor. Our vending machine would have switches for selecting white coffee with sugar, black coffee without sugar, etc., etc. These switches and the coin machine switch are connected to the input ports of the microcontroller, which is an enhanced microprocessor. The output port of the microcontroller controls water temperature, coffee dispenser, sugar dispenser, plastic cup dispenser, and the valve controlling water flow. The vending machine operates if a right coin is put in the slot and a selection button is pressed. A plastic cup is released, coffee is put, water is added, and optionally milk and sugar added. So friends, we have discussed the concepts of programmable sequential machine and von Neumann machine. We also know how to describe the operations of a microprocessor with the help of these concepts. In the forthcoming lesson, you will learn about the internal architecture of a microprocessor. Thank you and goodbye.